Hi, I'm Paolo. In this video, you'll see how to set up a simple experiment and take your first measurements with the Lab1 user interface that comes included with your new Zurich Instruments locking amplifier. Let's start by changing from the default view of the Lab1 web interface to the graphical view of the modulator. At the heart of the lock-in, you find the mixer and low-pass filter. In order to observe a signal, we connect the lock-in output to the input and turn on the output with the default peak amplitude of 100 millivolts. On the input side, we click the Auto Range button to adjust the input gain to match the signal to the range of the input digitizer. It is very important to avoid any signal clipping, which can cause detrimental artifacts. The other input controls select between AC and DC coupling, high impedance or 50 ohm input impedance, and, depending on your lock-in, single or differential measurements. Let's go to the Scope tool to check what the input signal looks like. As expected, we see a sinusoidal with an amplitude of 100 millivolts. This signal is now entering one side of the mixer, while the other one is connected to the internal reference, currently set to 10 MHz. This menu allows you to change to an external reference if necessary. The output from the mixer is then fed to the low-pass filter, which can be configured in terms of bandwidth or, equivalently, time constant. The choice of bandwidth for the filter is crucial, and this is a result of a trade-off. Smaller bandwidths mean higher signal-to-noise ratio, but also longer measurement time, as the two are inversely proportional. We can see the effects of changing the bandwidth on the numerical tool. This is even easier to see on the plotter tool. Smaller values give smoother curves, but we lose the faster components. Plotter also provides qualitative and quantitative ways to measure the noise. The histogram gives you an intuitive idea of the signal spread. And the statistical analysis in the math tab puts numbers to it. In addition to the bandwidth, you can also select the filter order. Low orders are usually preferred for feedback loops, where the filter-induced phase shift has to be minimized. Higher orders are preferred when the goal is to optimize the signal-to-noise ratio with a given filter bandwidth. Now the measurement results are ready to be used. They can be sent to one of the four auxiliary outputs and be used to provide analog feedback. For each output, the user can conveniently set scaling and offset to customize the signal to their needs. At the same time, the measurement data can be transferred to the PC. For this, a data rate needs to be chosen. In order to avoid aliasing effects, we recommend to set it to about 5 to 10 times higher than the demodulator bandwidth. The higher limit depends on the instrument, the setup complexity, and the data channel. Please check the specification section on the user manual for more information. These indicators alert the users if the maximum rate has been exceeded. Red, when data loss is occurring, and yellow, if it occurred in the past. Clicking on this button resets them. The analog outputs have a fixed data rate and are unaffected by this. Once the data is transferred to the PC, you can analyze it with the plotter, where the values are displayed over time, with the spectrum analyzer that shows you the spectral content of your demodulated signal, or you can take time snapshots using the software trigger. Each of these tools provides ways to save data conveniently. This button will save the data as a text file, and this one as a vector graphics. Alternatively, you can simply save the entire stream of data. Go to the config tab, select in this panel what you want to save and click on record. The streams are now continuously saved to this location until you click record again. You are now ready for your own measurements. We've just scratched the surface of what the Lab1 user interface has to offer. Stay tuned. See you next time.